When you start Touch DRO, this is the screen you see. It is designed to look like a traditional digital readout, but there is a lot going on here, so let's take a closer look. The screen is divided into a few sections. The top part is called Application Toolbar. It contains a few commonly used controls. This is the main application menu button. As the name suggests, it opens the main menu. We will come back to the menu a bit later. This is the connection button. It shows the current connection status and is used to connect to the Touch GRO adapter. Notice that the icon changed from gray to blue. This means that the DRO is now connected. The last button lets you switch to the graphical projection view screen. We will cover this screen in a later video. To go back to the main screen, we can use the back button. On the right side of the screen, we have the subdatum panel. You probably already guessed from the name that it shows the contents of the saved subdatum memory. At the top, it shows the name of the current workspace. The workspace name is a button. You can press it to open the workspace list. This is a separate subject, so let's skip it for now. The arrow button to the right hides the panel. Below the workspace name are some function buttons. They let you edit, delete, and manipulate the subdatum coordinates. Underneath the buttons is the area where saved subdatum coordinates would be. Right now, the list is empty. Normally, you will have some coordinates here. This is how it looks after I added some coordinates. To recall a subdatum coordinate, tap the item in the list. Tap it again to turn it off. You can also long press an item to turn on multi-selection mode. You can then tap more items to add to the selection. For example, when you want to delete or clone more than one coordinate. Finally, in the lower right corner, we have the plus button. It's used to add new coordinates. When you tap it, Touch DRO will add the current spindle position to the list. Long pressing the button opens a dialog that has some additional options. We will cover subdata memory in more depth in a separate video. For now, there is a link to the user manual page in the description. Now, let's hide the right panel and look at the main area of the screen. It shows three axis readouts and the function strip below them. You can change this in the application settings to fit your machine configuration. Let's start with the readouts. Going from left to right, we have the Axis menu button. It opens the Axis Details dialog. There is more info about it in the user manual. Next, we have the Position readout. You can customize it to show more decimal places in the application settings. The readout is also a button that lets you preset a dimension. Most mirror fields in Touch DRO take simple arithmetic expressions. I can enter expression like 0.75 plus 764 and the DRO will convert it to 0.859. To the right of the readout, we have per axis action buttons. You can configure which buttons show up here when the right panel is expanded or collapsed. The readout can be green, gray, or amber. Green means that the DRO is getting data from the scales. Gray means that the DRO is disconnected or the hold function is active. Amber readout means that it has an active cutter offset. Lastly, let's talk about the function strip. These are global functions. In other words, they affect more than one axis. The first three buttons are self-explanatory, but they have secondary long-click functions. For example, long pressing the zero set button sets the absolute origin. Long pressing the absolute incremental button clears the offset. The rest perform various DRO functions. Some of them are modal. In other words, the function remains in effect until you cancel it. For example, the cutter radius compensation button turns green when there is an active offset. To clear it, long press the button. We will cover each function in more detail in separate videos. This is all for now. Thank you for watching.